If you've been struggling with anxiety and depression and don't know where to turn for mental health support, HERS can help. At ForHers.com, you can get access to real medical providers who can prescribe trusted anxiety and depression medications 100% online if they're right for you. To get started, go to ForHers.com slash Elise. That's ForHers.com slash E-L-Y-S-E. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Lemonada Media presents a new podcast with a vintage twist. Raised by Ricky, hosted by me, Ricky Lake. If you've lived through the 90s, you might remember my talk show. And if you're attracted to the warm nostalgia of the 90s, you will love diving in with me to see what it was like. Along for the ride is TV personality and digital creator, Kaylin Allen. Together, we will rewatch the show and unpack what was wrong with the 90s and what was so right. Find Raised by Ricky wherever you listen to your podcasts. Lemonada. Okay, actually, can you just pretend that you're listening to a fully complete theme song here? I got really in my head, and I tried to make it perfect, and I couldn't. So this is going to be the theme song right here. (laughs) Hello, and welcome to Funny Because It's True. I'm Elise Myers. Today, I'm talking to Kevin Jonas, and let me just tell you that after our conversation, I feel like there truly is just no limit on how you can explore and express your creativity. After the Jonas Brothers broke up in 2013, Kevin went on to start a construction company. Did you know that? I did not know that. And I think that's so cool. From there and with the band like getting back together in 2019, Kevin found so many different ways to like constantly express his creativity. He's written children's books with his wife, Danielle. He launched a production company and he distributed the snack everyone did not know they craved and needed, Rob's Popcorn. By the way, after our conversation, I went on like a 30 minute rant on like why I love this popcorn and how it's not just sweet and not just salty. It's both and different all at the same time to my producers. And they were like, we get it. You like the popcorn? I was like, no, you don't get it. It's so good. I became a QVC ad for this popcorn. Um, Anyways, two things that are funny because they're true. Number one, I connected with Kevin after I posted a story about ripping my pants. So we get our popcorn, we're watching the movie, and I notice this buttered popcorn doesn't have enough butter on it. Ever. It never does. So I go into the lobby and I put more butter on the popcorn. I come back to my seat, I eat it. Movie ends, butter everywhere. Then Kevin commented on that post and tagged Rob's popcorn, which, like, okay, I'm not going to get into it, or I will derail this podcast and turn it into a popcorn ad. And number two, speaking of construction... Seamless transition. While preparing for this interview, I learned that Kevin made a surprise cameo on The Real Housewives of New Jersey as a contractor doing house construction. Like, he was there to help build one of the housewives' new house. Fun fact. There you go. Okay, let's get into it. Kevin, hi. How are you? I'm so excited to be doing this with you. I can't believe that this happened from some popcorn online. Watching your video about the pants... Yeah. (laughs) And what had happened and transpired, I was just like, this is so funny. I saw the video because you talk about popcorn, right? Yeah. I believe the algorithm gods connected us based on popcorn. It was, in fact, popcorn that brought us together. It's like, he wants the popcorn content. (laughs) Your story about the popcorn made uh, me and my wife, Danielle, laugh pretty hysterically. I'm so glad. (laughs) Have you ever had a moment like that happen on a red carpet where you're like, this is just, everything's going wrong? Um, uh, pants ripped a lot. Okay. Um, you know, there's an era of the Jonas Brothers where the pants were unnecessarily tight. Of course, yeah. Um, and there were times where it didn't work out as well. Um, you know what, actually? I'm going to get very personal right I would off love the that. Bat. Great. Uh, I am and was early on like a pretty bad sweater. Oh, like, yeah, me too. Underarm sweater guy. So, like, I would get, like, super anxious about it. And then the more anxious I got, the more I would sweat. And so, like, I'd hit to a red carpet and it would just be, like, before I'd even get there, it'd just be, like, drenched. And I was just, like, 
Did you wear like specific colors to avoid doing that? Specific colors. Yeah. And also like packed like tissue paper. Like no, tissues really? in my armpits. Yeah. That's that amazing. Bad. I would like they... take them off like after whatever, but like like once like we got stuffing in the door, your shirt. Essentially I stuffed my shirt in a different way. <laughs> Did you know, fun fact, people get Botox in their armpits to avoid sweating? Do you do that? I have ventured down that path before, actually. I don't want to spill your secrets if you, you know. Yeah, but I have. Does it work? It's real. <gasps> it does. That's amazing. It helps. It helps in a big way. And, um, I know a couple of friends as well that have like really sweaty palms. I know that people get Botox in their head for migraines. In like their jaw for grinding. Yeah, like TMJ or whatever it's called. Crazy enough, I have a neighbor who is the original guy like on the program to like bring it to market. But like based on the fact that they found out that like it makes you look, you know, super great, snatched all the time. Yeah, <laughs> snatched. But it started as something completely, you know, different. Fun facts with Kevin Jonas and Elise Myers. I'll have Kevin write the theme song. This is your neighbor, you said? Yeah, this is my neighbor. I would love to know my neighbors that well. I am like too afraid to talk to people when I'm out. And so I just like go home and I'm like, I wish I had friends. And then I don't talk to people. And I'm like, that's why I don't have friends. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do understand. Like we don't, we haven't always, we, we found a really beautiful area and beautiful place here in New Jersey where me and the family live. And oh, cool. we've really tried to make it home, home. Um, yeah. And our neighbors are great. And we wanted to know them because... I travel so much and I'm a gone. I'm truly gone a lot. Yeah. They kind of like look out for us and Danielle and the kids and it's great. It's really important to have that kind of community around, especially in the line of work that you do. I feel like yeah. having people that feel safe and, and can support you and your family is like such a big deal. And when you connect with someone like that, it's like, I want you to be around all the time. Like I just, you feel like home to me. Another fun fact, when I met Jonas, my husband Jonas, not a nickname for Kevin Jonas, um, before we started dating, I wrote a song called You Are Home To Me about him, and I gave it to him. And I never really thought about how weird that was at the time. But thinking back now, that's kind of weird. <laughs> it's really important. And I think that's why we've had the same team for so long. You know, like our manager has been the same manager that I've had since I was 16, 17 years old. Really? Yeah, uh, Phil McIntyre. And our bassist, Greg Garbowski, who joined us when we were in a van and trailer living in Wyckoff, New Jersey, is now our day-to-day -day manager and has been for the last five years, six years. Wow. That's not common at all, especially in this industry. Did you guys have a lot of that when you were growing up? Like, did you have people that kind of lived alongside of your family? That is that Was that modeled to you when you were little? Uh I think so. I don't know how much you know about our background, but we grew up um, in New Jersey. My dad was a pastor of a church, right? So we grew up in that kind of environment. So you can imagine, kind of doors always open. Oh, yeah. And he had friends, and we grew up around music so much that, like, it was just kind of a revolving door of, like, kind of a circus in a way. And we learned so much from so many different cultures and people, and it was really great. But I think we've kind of taken that to our life now. It's like, we're never really alone. Like, there's always somebody in our house. Yeah. Do you like that with your family? Like, I guess because you work so closely alongside people that you feel so safe with, it probably doesn't feel like strangers all the time, right? So it's just like an, a second family kind of always around. Do, do you enjoy that? Uh, we do. It makes it so comfortable. And it makes it difficult. Yeah. Because you're so comfortable, you sometimes still have to walk that line of like, this is a business and it is a thing. And so like... Yes, it is what we do for fun and we love this and it's a passion. You know, luckily we get to do what we love for our work. But at the end of the day, there is a lot of people that count on us. How do you handle being a creative person, employing people that you love and feel like family and are safe, and also being a healthy business owner? Like this is first a business, then your passion, but it's the same thing. And like, how do you keep those lines separate? I think the best thing we have done is and we were not good at this at all. Like really bad about communicating what we wanted and what our needs were. Really? I would want something. Joe would want something. Nick would want something. All different. We have three voices, three different people, three different opinions, which is what makes us who we are. Yeah. And then we have our extended family as well. And how does it affect them? And it was never really, we never learned to just say what we wanted. And once we started doing that, we're like, I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable are the three most amazing words in any situation. I am not comfortable. Got it. It's like life changing. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. So how do I make you comfortable? But well, you're not going to. 
Yeah. Do you have a, an example of, of like something that was a big moment of understanding that for the first time? Maybe when you were younger, like as an adult, we were like, oh, this is something I need to get better at. Uh, time. Okay. Like, like we forever would just always say yes. Um, and that's actually part of what drove us to break up as a band. Really? We would do all the things because we felt like we had to. We felt like it was like our responsibility. Do you think that was because you were thinking about how people would see your decisions or like? I think it was about early day trauma about like growing up and having to be perfect. Yeah. Like and having to always be like on. Yeah. People always ask us, how did you guys like, you know, stay pretty grounded and like level headed and like didn't blow up essentially? Like, no, no, we did in the background, but then we never showed it. Mm hmm. Right. And that's actually probably worse. I wish I could have been like my true crazy self and just been like, you know, just let it all go. But it ended up being that it wasn't that easy. Do you feel like some of that was because of the expectation of church with the fame? I think I think at times I think it started that way. But then it also just started with like we really did understand the gift that we were given. Yeah. This opportunity that we had, which was a bunch of kids making music and actually like doing something with it, like, oh man, and my parents making a huge financial sacrifice early on and like putting themselves in severe debt to like fund our idea. In a way that was, they pretty much told us, they said, look, here's the deal. We'll either spend this money that we had for you set aside for college, Mm -hmm. or we are going to help you for the next two years or the next year, try to get to whatever next benchmark it's going to be that someone else is going to take over. And we said, Spend the money. <laughs> How old were you guys when your family did that? I was probably 17, 18 at that point, 19. Okay. And you're the oldest, so they were like... They were young. Yeah. Young. Oh my yeah. gosh. So I have three older brothers, and they're all pretty much close in age to um, you and your brothers, which is always fascinating to me. And um, I know my brother Trevor, my oldest, always felt so much pressure to like carry the weight of all of his siblings on his back all the time. Was that... Something you experienced? Not necessarily. I think it was actually more about uh, people pleasing. Really? I would always revert to like whatever the group needed and that like took over my life. And then that's the day I changed was like, oh no, it's my daughter's birthday. Like that show you want to book that day? No. And it was just no. Was that like a big thing? Did that? Well, yeah, because if you're in the middle of a tour, just for a little context, right? And you have a whole tour. Yeah. And you have a show every two, like two shows, three shows in a row, then a day off, then another two or whatever. If you add another day off in between, that's a full another day of people staying in hotel rooms, like, and like another day off essentially. Yeah. So you're paying them without any income in that moment. Right. Which creates a, a down moment on the tour. Right. But saying, I don't care. This is for myself and for my mental health and like my family's health, me being gone as much. This will mean more to her than it, it'll end up costing me less in my life. And I know that's simple, right? And it, but like people work on their kid's birthday, whatever. But when I've been gone for four months, it's a little different. Yeah. That effort to be home is so important. And like, that is when you kind of have to have that key that you turn where you're like, I need this. And you can't really convince me otherwise. It's like, no. Totally. Period. End of story, like complete sentence. And like I said, it's just the moment you finally start standing up for yourself in a way that's like responsible and respectful, right? I think that's, and communicating not just because you just are being a diva. Let's take a quick break. When we get back, Kevin tells us how he explored his other realms of creativity while the Jonas Brothers were on a break. We all know that mental health can be messy, and it can be hard sometimes to even get a grasp on how you're feeling. Am I anxious? Am I hungry? Do I need therapy or just a cheeseburger? Everyone's on their own unique journey, and if there is one thing I know, it's that mental health isn't linear. How you feel can change on a weekly, daily, and sometimes even hourly basis, but it's the most important thing to take care of. That's why I'm excited to partner with Calm, the number one mental wellness app to give you the tools that improve the way that you feel. If you go to calm.com slash Elise, you'll get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. Over 100 million people around the world use Calm to sleep better and take care of their minds. Thank you, Calm. 
For listeners of the show, Calm is offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash Elise. Go to C-A-L-M dot C-O-M slash Elise for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash Elise. There's so much coping that we're all expected to do on our own, but it doesn't have to be that way. Sure, we can share mental health tips and strategies like my treadmill desk or my dinner routine, but sometimes that's just not enough. HERS offers access to mental health care that can support you in your day-to-day, including dealing with anxiety and depression. At ForHERS.com, you can get access to real medical providers who can prescribe trusted anxiety and depression medications 100% online, if they're right for you. If prescribed, get your first month of treatment for only $25, afterwards it's $85 a month, or $49 with a three-month subscription. To get started, go to forhers.com slash Elise. That's forhers.com slash E-L-Y-S-E. Hers makes it so simple. For example, there's no insurance required. It doesn't really get much simpler than that. Get started today at forhers.com slash Elise. That's forhers.com slash E-L-Y-S-E. Offer only available if prescribed. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Subscription required. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. So like how how much growth happened for you during that break of the Jonas Brothers? Like all of the growth. All of, like, it. Okay. all of it. I actually think the the growth started when Nick decided, like Nick truly did say, like, I need to change. Like, I want to do something different. Yeah. Like, as much as that was like, Ugh, you know, yeah. killer moment, it goes back to I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to do this anymore. And I don't want to do this. Ended up being the thing that, like, opened up everything for him to have his project and Joe to go to DNCE, me to actually come home, live life with my family that I, you know, about to have a newborn, the first kid. And as much as it was like, oh my God, my world's spinning out. Like I just lost my source of everything, my identity, income, all of it. Instantly you start going like, Ugh, you know, you start panicking. Yeah. What was that like when you came home after everything ended and it was like your first week? Like if you can go back to like your first week, everything's over, you're home, you're about to have a baby, you're like, what now? Like, what was that like going back? Uh, I sat on the couch for like two weeks. Didn't move. I became a shell of myself. I honestly didn't know how to operate. Straight up, 100%, didn't know what to do. Scared of all things. Yeah. And it was not awesome. It's disappointing to say it. Like, because I, I feel like I didn't handle it well. Looking back on it, I, I think I had known and I didn't want to admit it. And I think mm. that's, and I think I was trying to decide for myself whether or not I could be okay. But instead of, instead of like going to her and be like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm really scared. Like, I just was like, I'm fine. And like, but I like shut down, you know? Mm. Okay. So I read that you started a construction company after the band broke up. Where did that motivation come from? Yeah, I really enjoyed, like, I think it's just being creative, right? It was a different way to be creative. Um, I, like, renovated our house with my wife. Wow. That was what happened as well. Like, I was building a house, about to have a baby. Like, band breaks up, and I'm like, oh, no, (laughs) you know? Oh, no, yeah, (laughs) crisis mode. Yeah, exactly. And so, but I enjoyed that process of, like, being creative, like, seeing, like, I would love to see, like, this thing, and then it's built. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not the one building it, but, like... You mean you weren't the one building yourself? Just, like, houses from the ground up? (laughs) Oh, all of a sudden, like, just, like, didn't build a house. Yeah, no. So I did that for a minute. That was fun. But I decided that it was the day-to-day of it all that, like, I didn't love. So I was just like, this is not rewarding. Like what? Like the admin of it, or...? I liked seeing the product of, like, creativity. Yeah. But I didn't like the product of the grind to get there in that environment. It took too long. Yeah. I'm I'm impatient. I, that's why I love like painting, drawing, writing music, things like that, because I have complete control over it. I can do it. I don't have to rely on anybody else and like their opinion of it. And as soon as you include more people's opinions and more people's time and schedules, you're just like, this is a disaster. <laughs> like It's taking too much time. Totally. It, you know, and I think, I don't know how deep in the woods have you've gotten with like doing like a pitch for a TV show or like going any of that. Like I have a company called Copper Cup and me and my my partner Spencer, like we've been working for the last two years and we've sold like eight or nine shows at this point. 
Really? Okay, wait, hold on. I want to hear that because I'm in the process of like in development of a show and I, it's right. very, very a lot and it's so overwhelming. So how did you get into that? So I've been doing it for a long time, coming up with ideas, creative, whatever. I actually started this project, started this idea, met him. Um, we went out and sold it. And he was with another company at the time. And I was like, I really vibe with you and I want to keep doing this. Yeah. And he's like, me too. But that was like three years ago. Not a single show that has been sold is into production yet. Crazy. That's how long this stuff takes, right? It's forever. But all of a sudden, I could turn around and have nine shows in develop. You know, like, like, so, like, it's just one of those, you have to be okay with, like, the grind. Yeah. And notes. Ugh. Oh, God. How do you do with notes? How do you do with feedback? Are you, like, I love it, or are you? I'm really good. And I'm also, like, I'm also pretty flexible with these things. Okay. People just, like, think we're comedians as well. Mm. I think at times we can be funny, sure, but like, I don't know if comedy is our whole thing, right? Yeah. I have a hard time with that on stage. I need to do better. I need to do better. <laughs> um, we're just talking. That whatever. Oh. Just like on stage. You know, it doesn't have to be like this, we were here because of you and thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, it's like, I had oatmeal and they really disappointed me. But this song doesn't disappoint me and go into a song. <laughs> doesn't have to matter. Doesn't have to do anything. And I think that's something that's so cool about these shows I've been doing in Las Vegas, which is like we're performing and every single night is a completely different set list. Like when I say a different set list, I mean top down, not the same show. Wow. Every night? Every night. How do you do that? Just figure it out. You're just a pro. I would literally, I would combust. I would, someone would tell me the premise of that and I'd be like, I think I'm going to pass out. It's actually more rewarding and actually it's better for us, I think. Yeah. Because we, it's new to us as well. Yeah, true. So you enjoy it more. We have, uh, not being this way, we have so many songs. We have so many songs. (laughs) Listen, I have so many songs. I have so many songs. We have (laughs) an incredible, large catalog already. And we're only about to add to it. Well, I'm, even when we loaded this up, you were like playing a guitar and I could hear it before I could see you. And I'm just like, this is his whole life. You are just <laughs> playing a guitar while somebody like is getting the Zoom ready. And I'm like, Kevin is such a badass. <laughs> no, I just, I, I walk into a room. There's always a guitar in all the spaces in our house. I love that. Which is important for me because I just don't want to be without arm's length of a, of a way to play. In every room of my house, um, I have half drinking water cups because I never know if that water cup is from today or seven weeks ago. So not the same as guitars, but I understand the sentiment. (laughs) I think that as a creative person, it's not like a tool, like your guitar isn't like a tool for you. It's literally like an extension of your body. That's how things that I love and how I express my creativity feel. For me, like um, my attachment to those things can come and go and I can look at something and be like, the last time I touched you, I like processed something too heavy and I don't want to like <laughs> bring that up again. <laughs> That's interesting. It's almost like a limb or yeah. it's, it's an extension of you. For sure. I totally feel yeah. that. Um, and there are things, there are guitars that have those moments for me. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take one more break. And when we come back, Kevin tells us why he thinks their upcoming Jonas Brothers album is going to be their best one yet. Have you ever tried putting together furniture for yourself? It can be a humbling experience. What if I told you that you could have gorgeous furniture without the clunky assembly process? Introducing The Bed by Thuma. Handcrafted from eco-friendly, high-quality, upcycled wood, The Bed has a modern, minimalist design that helps elevate any space. The bed is put together using the timeless technique of Japanese joinery. Each piece locks into place, meaning no tools or excess hardware are required for assembly. With clean lines, subtle curves, and lifestyle-enhancing details, the bed is simple sophistication for the bedroom. Made for how you live, the bed by Thuma is backed with a lifetime warranty, ships right to your door in three easy-to-maneuver boxes, and takes about five-ish minutes to assemble with no tools required. Make your bedroom more sleek with The Bed by Thuma. And now go to thuma.co slash funny to receive a $25 credit towards your purchase of The Bed plus free shipping in the continental U.S. Go to thuma.co slash funny. That's T-H-U-M-A dot C-O slash funny for a $25 credit. I love going to restaurants, but there's just something so much more satisfying about a meal that you cooked. 
Cooking sometimes means lots of grocery shopping trips and guesswork with brands and long lines at the register, and that's why ButcherBox wants to make you love home cooking again. One of my favorite recommendations to give out is ButcherBox because they send you humanely raised quality meat at a good price right to your doorstep, aka 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, and wild-caught seafood. Plus, there's free shipping for the continental U.S. and no surprise fees. And they let you choose from a variety of box plan options, from curated to customized, changing your plan whenever you want. Have I mentioned the exclusive member deals that let you save big on your favorite cuts? ButcherBox is offering our listeners one of their best deals yet, a 100% grass-fed chuck roast and a whole organic chicken free when you join. Plus, an additional $20 off your first box. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash Elise and use code E-L-Y-S-E to get a 100% grass-fed chuck roast and a whole chicken free in your first box plus $20 off. That's butcherbox.com slash Elise and use code E-L-Y-S-E to get this special deal. So I know that you're working on an album right now, but where are you guys in that process? We are very much in the album creative right now, like all of it. What does that process look like for you guys, kind of from start to finish? It's been a very long process. Really? We've been writing and working on this album since 2020, and it is honestly the best music we've ever made. Really? And like, I'm not even biased. Like it truly, it was a different process, so I feel like I could say that. Um, Yeah. It is honestly like, I think the most honest, the most real, the most, like, it's the best. It's the album. How did you guys get there? It's so hard to be able to express that without giving you information that I can't give you. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. There was a world, there was a time in music where you could just, all right, it's done. Print, go. Yeah. You know, uh, which we could do. I feel like this deserves more attention than that. If there's anybody that would not think that's crazy, it would be me. I think people with curly hair understand this. Yes, that's it. I think it's the curls, yeah. Things take (laughs) time. (laughs) I'm like brutal in the creative process. I I think that there's a specific point of view where, for me at least, it feels like this isn't just something that I'm creating for you to be entertained by. It's like I am literally putting myself into this different medium for you to like enjoy of me. Mm -hmm. And that is so personal. It's so even like to the point of like the ads I do on this podcast, I'm I like want to have a a say in every word that goes into it. It's like, it's you totally. And I think that if you don't feel that way, you should (laughs) like, it's it's important. No, and definitely. And sometimes sometimes you just got to do the work, right? Right. We all know that totally. So, by the way, you should know that every time I go to tag my husband Jonas in a story online, I basically almost tag you first every time. You should. You should. If I ever had a son, we talked about, like, his last name Jonas, but, like, first name Jonas. Jonas Jonas? But middle name Jonas. Jonas Jonas Jonas. Jonas Jonas. would be such an incredible (laughs) name. (laughs) Well, now you have to meet Jonas so that you guys can experience the Jonas Jonas Where are you guys based now? We're, We're in Nebraska. Nebraska. Love it. Yeah. We uh, we have thought about moving other places and Don't. Uh, yeah, we really love <laughs> we really love being in the Midwest. I genuinely want like my dream is to create what is in LA, create those opportunities in the Midwest. I love that. Look, I live in New Jersey. Yes, I'm in a suburb of New York City, but I'm still like very much in New Jersey. New Jersey is amazing, dude. Oh my gosh. People don't understand how amazing this this place is. Every every bit of filming I've ever done on a, a shoot, uh, I've done a lot with Audible and I've always filmed in New Jersey every time. Yep. And it's so gorgeous. And I just like, every time I go, I'm like, I could move here. You should. Every- that, that's the only place you could come. <laughs> okay. Like, just that, New Jersey. That, that's fine. Yeah. Show me the neighborhoods that you're like, this is where I would move to and we can go look at houses. Yeah. Just come over, have dinner here and you'll see. <laughs> Did Kevin Jonas just invite me to his house for dinner in an unironic way? And to move to New Jersey? My wife will cook for you, make amazing Italian food, and you'll die. Well, Kevin, you might not know this, but I make a mean big meatball. (laughs) Emphasis on the singular ball. It's a big one. Oh my gosh, I would love to meet Danielle. And you have, how many kids do you have? We have two. We have an almost nine-year-old and a six-year-old. Two girls. Is that the weirdest, to have kids that old? Uh... It's changing. 
right? Like it's definitely like our oldest has definitely got a personality. Like school is intense now. Like I didn't realize their grade like mattered, but it does. It's intense. What are some things with your family that you like to prioritize and are like, when I'm home, we do these things together? Because I'm trying to find those with my family that just feel like special, you know? Yeah. How old is your son? He'll, he'll be two in a few days. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, we try to read at night together. You have books, right? You, you wrote mm-hmm. children's books? Yeah, we have a children's book, me and my wife, Danielle. We have another oh. one coming out in May, which will be really cool, a second oh one. My gosh. Do you have, can um, you share the name of that yet or no? Oh, yeah. There's a beach in my bedroom because we had, you know, there's a concert in my bedroom. Um, it's about disappointment, this one, which is really cool. Because oh. um, kids, they don't understand that not everything goes your way. Right? Yeah. You have a whole day planned. You're going to go to the beach. Well, it starts raining. What do you do? You don't go to the beach. Oh, man. Right? I need this book. (laughs) I need this book for myself. And in living in New Jersey, that's like a thing we can do. Right? Like, we live not by the beach. But I could go to the beach in like an hour and 20 minutes. I could be like on the water, which is amazing. But if it's raining, I'm not going to go. But if we said we were going to go. It's disappointment. It's disappointment. And how do you manage that disappointment? And how do you like make it better? Make it okay. Like, what do you, how do you like shift your thinking to make the environment okay? So turn, make make the, put the beach in your bedroom. Do you enjoy working on those projects with your wife? Is that something that you love? Uh, So it's one of my favorite things to do in the world is working with her. Yeah. Because there's more than just doing that one thing, right? Yeah. Like we get to go do press together. We get to do all this, all this other stuff. And all of a sudden, like, we have make it. We turn it into date nights, and we fill that time. I love that, <laughs> Kevin. Thank you seriously so much. Thank you. I'm so grateful for your time, and we did it. <laughs> More to come. Thank you so much for listening to my conversation with Kevin Jonas. Definitely keep your earballs and eyeballs open so you don't miss the release of the Jonas Brothers' newest album. There hasn't been an official release date yet, but from my conversation with Kevin, it sounds like it's coming really soon. I can't wait. And if you like Funny Cause It's True, please rate and review us. It really helps. Okay, see you next week. Bye. There's more Funny Cause It's True with Lemonada Premium. You'll get access to all of Lemonada's premium content, including My 5 Questions with Kevin Jonas, coming out next Friday. Subscribe now in Apple Podcasts. Funny Cause It's True is a Lemonada Media and Powder Keg production. The show is produced by Claire Jones, Zoe Dennis, Nancy Rosenbaum, and Linnea Tony. Our associate producer is Tiffany Bowie. Rachel Neal is our senior director of new content, and our VP of weekly production is Steve Nelson. Executive producers are Stephanie Whittles-Wax, Jessica Cordova-Kramer, Paul Feig, Laura Fisher, Kessla Childers, and me, Elise Myers. This show is mixed by Johnny Vince Evans, additional help from Noah Smith and Ivan Kryev. Our theme song music was written by me and scored by Xander Singh. Follow Funny Cause It's True wherever you get your podcasts, or listen ad-free on Amazon Music with your Prime membership. Hey, Lemonada listeners, we want to hear from you. You know we love our sponsors for a ton of reasons, but one of the main ones is that they help us keep the lights on. And there's a really easy way that you can help us draw new advertisers and hear ads for things you're most interested in. Filling out our quick anonymous survey at lemonadamedia.com slash survey. By just answering a few questions, you can help us find new brands to connect with and also share feedback about show content you'd like to see across the network. And to sweeten the deal, once you've completed the survey, you can enter for a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card. I promise the survey is short and sweet and will help us play ads you don't want to skip and also keep bringing you content you love. Just go to lemonadamedia.com slash survey. Last Day from Lemonada Media explores the moments that change us. Those times where you look back and say, whoa, one day I was myself and the next I wasn't. I'm Stephanie Whittles-Wax, and I have seen time and time again how sharing these stories can change lives. So do you have a moment in your life that changed you fundamentally and forever? What happened? How did you move through it? And how did you eventually start again? If you'd like to share your story, go to bit.ly slash lastdaystories, B-I-T dot L-Y slash lastdaystories. We can't wait to hear from you. We can't wait to hear from you. We can't wait to hear from you. We can't wait to hear from you.